I want to read from the book of John chapter 14 from verse 16 to the to 26 John 14 16 to 26 and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you I will leave I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye, ye see me because I leave ye shall leave also at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him Judah said unto him not his chariot Lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the, the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my word my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he that loveth me not keepeth not my saying and the word which ye hear is not mine but the fathers which sent me these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you let us pray kind father we are so thankful this morning we well, thank you for the prayers that have been offered in this place we well, thank you lord for the songs and the offering for the Sunday school teaching and now father we quieten ourselves on the life given breast of El Shaddai feed us this morning break for us the bread of life that we may eat and hunger no more give us also Lord the water of life that we may thirst no more Father bless the little children downstairs as they try to worship you the best they can may you bring forth out of their mouths songs of praise according to the scriptures and now Father forgive us of our trespasses as we approach the holy word we pray dear God that you will sanctify every soul that is simple and sincere this morning that I have come to worship the Lord may we put in a good day's worship that it may be worthy and acceptable to you take away every Carnality, every pride. May the Spirit of Christ move in this place. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for those little babies. Oh, how we love them, Lord. How we are more sick when they are sick. How we are more troubled when they are 
uncomfortable. But Lord, you are God that understands our feelings. The feelings of our infirmities. Now you have taught them. And the ones from the hospital are back home. The ones in the home are healthy. We are thankful to you, our Father. For you are God that releases the virtue. The healing balm of Gilead. And we can all rejoice that we are balm in Gilead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Oh, how great is our merciful. How wonderful thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior God. How great thou art. How great thou art. My Lord, how great thou art. Dancing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Everything that is present here, visible or invisible, will bring them to subjection to the power of thy name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. This morning we want to speak on the topic of manifestation. Spiritual manifestation. We just read from the book of John, chapter 14. And the Lord was speaking from the heart to those that believe Him and those that followed Him. And He was revealing to them. The plans and purposes of God. Which only the members of the family of God are supposed to know. And he says, I will pray the Father. And he will send you another comforter. Another comforter. Another comforter. Jesus was their comforter. But he was in the flesh. But he was living now. And every man needs a comforter. Every man needs a comforter. But the true comforter is God. Because there's a limit to what man can do. But there's no limit to what God can do. And this comforter, Jesus said, is dwelling with you now. And he was talking about himself. See? But he said, this comforter that is to come will not just be with you, but he will be in you. In you. And he was speaking about the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. But there's only one that is holy. The Holy One. See? This Holy One in the Old Testament is the same Holy One in the New Testament. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, And you deny and have crucified the Holy One and have demanded that a robber be released unto you. He was referring to the same one. There's only one that is holy. Not two, not three, not four. There's only one holy one. 
of Israel. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But this uh, statement came up in verse 22. In verse 21, He that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. This statement Puzzled one of the apostles. His name was Judas. Not Iscariot. Judas is a good name. See? Iscariot uh, it wasn't the name, it was the spirit in the man. It wasn't the name. And Judas said unto him, verse 22, not Iscariot, Lord. How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now many times this has been used to prove that God was different from Jesus. No. The Lord Jesus was talking about manifestation. And Judas wanted to know how possible is it. You are visible. And every man can see you. How is it going to be that when you manifest yourself to us, we only will be able to see you. And the rest of the world will not see you. And Jesus said, this manifestation will be based on love, obedience, and abode. First he said, they that love me, that's where the manifestation will take place. Among those that love God. Amen. Among those that love God only. Not those that go to church. Not those that follow Brother Branham. Not those that carry the Bible. Those that love God. Those that love God. It's one thing to go to church. It's purely a different thing to love the Lord. See? It's a different thing to love the Lord. Most of you have come to church this morning not because you love God. No. There are some who are not in church this morning and they are crying. They wish they were here. They wish they were here. They wish nothing could stop them. Their heart is bleeding where they are. Why? They love God. They love Him. They want to be at His feet. They want to hear Him. They are wondering now, what is He saying to His people? They love Him. There are some of you here now looking for a woman. The others are looking around for a man. The other one is looking around, he's sick, he wants to be healed. Not because you love God. It's because you're selfish. You're here for personal reasons. Personal gain. The Bible says some people think that godliness is gain. Whatever they can gain, then they go and worship God. To gain something. So such people, God will never manifest himself. Never. But surely there are people here this morning. They love the Lord. They come to make Him God. They, they come to worship Him. They, in their heart, God can see that 
because they are here not for any reason, but to hear what he has to say. That's where the manifestation starts. That's where the revelation starts. That's where the spiritual manifestation of God that the world cannot see. The next thing is obedience. They that have my commandment and they love me and they obey or they keep it. They that hear his word because they love him. That's what Abraham says. Where Abraham says, why am I like an animal? But you love God and you hear his word with the intention to obey it. How can you manifest yourself to us and not to the world? How? Jesus said, this is how it will happen. First, those that love me. Not like Judas is carrying a carrying bag of money about and a devil. Not John and James' his brother looking for how to who will sit on the right, who will sit on the left in the kingdom. That's not love. That's selfish ambition. This is how I will reveal myself. These are the people that will see me. The world will be there gazing, going to church. And my program is going on. Among they that love me. They love me. And they obey. They have my commandment. They have it. Read that way it's written. They have it. They have it. They that have my command. They have it. They are not ignorant of it. They have it. They possess it. And they intend to keep it. He says these are the people that will know when it begins to happen. The world will be there quoting quotations. Whereas I am dealing is a spiritual revelation. It's a spiritual manifestation. The prophet says it's going to be a spiritual catching away. The world won't even know when it happens. See? First, how will you do it, Lord? And we will know. And the world will not know how. An apostle was asked. And Jesus explained it. They that have my word and they love me and they keep my commandment. He said, These are the people. Then I will love them and my Father will love them and we will make our abode in Him. We will come and live inside the man. How many are going to leave? He says, my father and me. Is that right? Now notice. The father is a spirit. Is that correct? We must realize that. When Jesus speaks about his father, remember, angel Gabriel said, the Holy Spirit of God will overshadow you and you will have a son. So the Father is the Spirit of God. Now, Jesus said, My Father and I, who is He? The Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was Now, when the Spirit of God comes into you, what did Jesus say it will do? It will bring to your remembrance every single word I've ever spoken to you. So the Spirit of God comes with the Word of God and dwells in this man who loves God, who obeys God, 
Who gives this command? Hallelujah! The Spirit of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes into this man and this man is filled with the Word of God. How do you know the Word of God? The Pharisees and Sadducees, they read it every day. A virgin shall conceive. It happened there in their midst. They never saw it. Isaiah said there will be a voice in the wilderness. John came out of the wilderness. Shouted, repent everyone. They said, who are you? Are you the Messiah? Are you the Elijah? They had the Bible. So, it is not carrying the book. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost shall come, He will fix you. And He will bring to your remembrance. That is the only way you can know the Word of God. So he says, I and my father, I, the world, my father, the spirit, will live in this man. There cannot be a way the Holy Ghost can be in a man and he doesn't know the word of God. No way! See? For the Holy Ghost is the teacher. For the Holy Ghost is God. That was why when the apostles received the Holy Ghost, Judas couldn't ask this question again. He asked this question because he hadn't received the Holy Ghost. And when they came out of the upper room and the people listened to them, the wisdom was too high. The Bible said they took note that they were ignorant men. But they realized that they had been with Jesus. See? When the Holy Ghost came, the Holy Ghost came with the world. And that's what Jesus is saying here. I and my Father, the Spirit and the world, will live in you. And that is why when Jesus was on earth, they said, show us your father. He said, my father is inside me. Is that correct? And that's why Jesus was able to know the program. One after the other. One after the other. The son of man shall be betrayed. And shall be given to the hands of the sinners. And they shall mock him. And they shall scourge him. And they shall kill him. And in three days he will rise again. And they are forced to say, why? Why are you talking like that? Master, why? Why are they going to kill you? Peter said, you will never die. Why? Peter did not have the spirit, nor the world. When Jesus finally was arrested, he didn't use his power, he knew. That was the next item. The apostles ran away. He told Peter, you will deny me. Peter swore he will not. But when Peter denied, he forgave him because he knew that was the next item. And when they scourged him and they beat him and they stripped him, he didn't do anything. He knew that was the next step. When they took him to Herod, he did not appeal. He knew Herod would find him not guilty. They brought him back to Pilate. He didn't open his mouth. He knew the man would say, I find no fault in him. He knew the word. The spirit was in him. He knew what the prophet had said. See? When he was on the cross, he knew the prophet said that he asked for a drink and they gave him vinegar. He knew it. How did he know? By the spirit in him. He knew the next item that the prophet had spoken. He said, I thirst to fulfill that. And they brought the vinegar. And he did not drink it. 
Then the next thing he said, it is finished. Everything written by the scripture, by the prophet and time, was completely completed. And he said it's finished. He knew, hallelujah. And when the Roman soldier saw that kind of death, he said, this is the son of God. He had watched over many criminals die. This one is different. He knew that man was different. He was a man filled with the spirit and with the word. See? Alright, when he woke from the dead, he knew it was three days. He never said four. He never said two. He woke up according to the scriptures. The prophet said three days. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man be. On the third day he will rise again. And third day he rose again. According to the scripture. Because in him was the spirit of God and the word. He is the word. He met two disciples going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. He taught them the word. It was inside him. The Bible said beginning from Moses. Is that correct? He taught them. He had no book in his hand. How did he know? Beginning from Moses. The spirit was in him. And when the spirit comes in you brother. You will know the scripture. You will know the scripture. What are we talking about? Spiritual manifestation. Now. Follow me as we go. Now notice. That Jesus said. This is how it's going to happen. It's going to happen among those that love God. Not everyone that says Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Not all of them love God. They say it because others say it. Alright. Then they that obey these are the ones that the Spirit and the world will come and abide and they are the people that will know the program of God as we approach the rapture as we approach the end these are the men that the spirit in them will remind them one by one what God is doing the word of God was mighty in Elijah. Is that right? The spirit of God was there and so was the word. Elijah did everything according to the word of God. Is that correct? And when the next item of God's program about Elijah was to go in the rapture, Elijah knew it. Correct? He knew it. And when the day came, he got himself ready and walked away. He passed many people on the road. Only very few like him. Only his Elisha. Only the sons of the prophets. What about the rest of the nation? They knew absolutely nothing. They passed Jericho. They passed Jordan. They passed this. They passed that. He didn't attract anybody. They said, oh, that old man, he's always doing magic, don't worry. Because he uses mantle and divides Jordan and past, and the thing closed back. And they say, haven't you seen that before? Don't worry about that old man. Let's go before they call out bears from the bush to eat you up. They made mockery of the old man and went away. Don't forget how he killed all the prophets of Elijah, uh, Jezebel. Let's go, we'll leave the man alone. And they left him alone, but he was going in the rapture. The God in him, the word in him, had moved him out of his house. And he wasn't coming back. He was going to ride God's chariot. He was going up, 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 up in the rapture. Only very few knew about it. People in whom there was God. They knew what was being manifested. It will be the same now. Alright. 
Let me come down to the book of Matthew, a very familiar scripture. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, I want to read from verse 15. The way of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men that are great of tongues, of faith, of pestle? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruit you shall know them. Amen. All right. Now, why was the Lord making this prophecy? It's so important for the church to know that every church is what their preacher is. I want you to know that. Every church, every congregation, you cannot be higher than your preacher. And whatever your preacher is, that's what you are going to become. Jesus is the tree of life. Is that correct? He is the tree of life. That was in the Garden of Eden. He is the tree of life today. And his fruit, his fruit, every tree has fruit. And the Bible says by the fruit you know the tree. Whether the tree is good or bad. The fruit that Jesus bore as a tree was the apostles and the disciples. That was the fruit of the tree that we call Jesus Christ. What those fruit? There is no record that the apostles persecuted anybody. There is no record that the disciples killed anybody. But records abound that they raised the dead. Why? Why did they raise the dead? Because they also are life-giving fruit. Because a good tree will produce good fruit. When Jesus was here, he raised the dead. He cast out devils. He healed the sick. The fruit is the fruit that Jesus bore. Began to kill people. Huh? Cast in devils instead of out. Then something is wrong with the tree. Now we notice that the life of the tree finally finds himself in the fruit. Is that correct? When you take a mango fruit, you are holding a mango tree. Plus the root, plus the leaves, plus the branches. It's in that fruit. Am I correct? See? In other words, in every apostle or disciple was Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Can we say amen? amen? Jesus said, This comforter that is coming will be where? Inside you. Because that's the only way he can be in you is for him to become a spirit. So he said, Greet not that I go away. It's for your own good that I go away. When I go away, I will come again. I will not leave you comfortless. I will return. See? He says, I shall be in you. The tree of life, which is Christ, 
for those truths called the apostles and disciples and by the truth we know that the truth called Jesus Christ is God because of what is produced is God Amen, Amen. alright now the ordinary people who are not followers of Christ and believers I believe it was in Antioch that they saw these fruits how many of you know mango tree a mango tree raise up your hand the sentry has worried you before mango tree ok alright you know mango tree if you see the fruit will you know it if you see the fruit what will you call it mango fruit that's right mango fruit fruit you can't call mango seed mango tree no it's a fruit but that fruit belongs to a tree and the name of that tree must be attached to that fruit correct it has to be so in Antioch or, or is it in Antioch when they saw a group of people 120 of them men and women all of them acting like the tree see they knew hey these, these people are not Pharisees they are not acting like them this is not Pharisees they are not acting like them they are acting like one person Christ so they say they are Christ like see mango fruit look like mango fruit look like the fruit of Christ and that's why they call them Christians Christ like oh I like that don't you I like that hallelujah they didn't call listen they didn't call them uh, uh, John the Baptist like Isaiah like Moses like you want beyond that beyond that when they call you Brahmite you are very happy you are very happy to be called Brahmite anybody call me Brahmite I correct him right away that's not what I am in the first place Braham is not the name of the prophet his name is William Braham is his father and that man was a drunkard that's the truth of course maybe he believed before he died I don't know but the prophet of God was William so you don't rejoice over that the Bible Christ called us saints see higher than even Christians sanctified people let me show you it says this comforter will be in you Christ poured himself into his church amen we are taught by the prophet that all that God Almighty was, He poured in Christ. And all that Jesus Christ was, He poured it into His church. It's just like a, a mango tree. All that is in the tree, everything in the tree, is poured into the fruit. When you are eating a mango fruit, you are actually eating a mango tree. The leaves, the roots, the branches, everything is there. That's the truth. After eating, put it in the ground and see. It comes again. Because life is in it. So we find that God, in 1 Timothy 3.16... If you like to read that, First Timothy three sixteen, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Here, Paul did not say the Son of God was manifest. He said God. 
He didn't say God the Son. He said God. And there is only one. God. Manifested. And we are talking about manifestation today. How did God manifest in the flesh? God poured himself into a temple called Christ Jesus and they that knew God hallelujah they that knew the word of God let me show an example Jesus said uh, Judah said how is it going to happen and how shall we know and Jesus said first it will happen among those that love me and obey me then we shall come in them. Jesus was at Cana of Galilee in a wedding. Correct? The Bible speaks of the master of the feast. But Jesus wasn't the master. There was a chairman of the occasion. Jesus wasn't the chairman. Why? They didn't even know him. So he cannot be manifested to them. See? But there was a way that he manifested himself to them. Correct? He said, fill those pores with water. It caused a little uh, confusion in the hearts of ordinary people. But they obeyed. Is that right? It takes obedience. They obeyed. And when they obeyed, he said, okay, serve the water. And they tasted it. They didn't even know where it came from. But oh, the people that brought that water, the Mary that made the appeal, they knew who turned that water into wine. But who was this man? God was manifesting himself in the flesh. He poured himself into a man to show to the world that God is alive. The governor of the feast knew nothing about it. Of course. That is how many people will be around. And God is moving in a wonderful way. And they don't know nothing. Even people in the message. They are tied up with knowledge, 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 knowledge. Popping up with pride. And God is moving in a spiritual way. And they are moving in a way of knowledge. The tree of knowledge. COD said this. Uh, seven still said that. Uh, uh, Daniel or seventy we said that. Knowledge, 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 and damn! Now notice. In First John, chapter one. First John, chapter one, verse one and two. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes, with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Who is the us? Who is the us? The whole world? The Pharisees? The Sadducees? A group of people was manifested unto us in the midst of the nation. A man can give this testimony that that which was from the beginning. Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, John says that Genesis 1 1 came down. And we touch Genesis 1 1 among us. He says that eternal life, that eternal life that was from the beginning, that eternal life that was inside the Father was manifested to us. Who is this us? People that love him. People that obey him. He came among them. He dwelt with them. 
and he showed himself alive. He manifested himself to them. To us. Oh brother, I pray that you will be one of those that he will be manifesting himself to you. While all that are just just parambulating about. God is that eternal life is being revealed to you. And the program of God for this end of time is being revealed to you. Oh. Alright, let's just go on. God manif- manifested himself to his own. See? He said we looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. I told you, Jesus said, and we will ab- abide. We will make a- our abode with him. What is that that is going to make abode with you? It is the word and the spirit. That's what makes abode with you. When the Father, who is the Spirit, comes, then He comes with the world. You can't have the Spirit and not have the world. But the Bible says, And the word of God came to the prophet. Why? The Spirit is already there. When Jesus came to be baptized, everybody lined up. He too joined in the line. There was no such a time he forced himself before anybody. He lined up like anybody else. For the Bible says all Judea and Jerusalem came to Jordan. Baptize the next person. If a woman comes, he doesn't have to look up. He is not a woman. Baptize the woman. Let him go. And then the man comes. He looks up. See? And then there was a sign from the sky. Come right into the man. And John stopped baptizing. He stopped. And he said, You are to baptize me. You are to baptize me. Hallelujah! Can you imagine the whole of Jerusalem and Judea standing there watching these two people? Wondering what are they talking about? John, do quick because the way you are preaching the end is coming let's do quick we want to be baptized before the end comes and John was debating with this man you are to baptize me no you are, don't worry go ahead baptize me no master ah, you are before me uh, the one that sent me said I should look up I saw that sign it came on you I know who you are baptize me no John don't worry leave it like that and maybe Maybe it took another 10 minutes. The two of them. The two of them talking. Here is the word coming to John. The spirit already had arrived. And here is the word. And that's what Jesus said. If you love me, my father, the spirit will come. Then the word will come. And will live inside you. And that's the only way you know God's program. There's no other way. Pharisees don't even know who John is. How will they know who Jesus is? See? Alright. He manifested himself that way. God manifests himself to us by dwelling in us today and by making us loving. Because God is love. Is that right? God is love. And the Bible says, He that is born of God uh, he that loveth is born of God. He that loveth not has not known God. You don't even know Him. You come to church alright, but you don't know who God is. He has not manifested Himself to you. Alright. The Pharisees claimed also to be priests of God. Disciples of Moses. And so on. But look at their feet. Look at the fruit of the Pharisees. What they produce. Remember. Every church will be like their preacher. Whoever preaches to you is actually pouring himself into you. What he has is what he pours into you. Can you understand that? 
Alright, we are coming. I made that a little clear. Now this Pharisees, like Jesus had to pour himself into his disciples. How? By his preaching. The power of the word. The power of transformation. The word of God transforms those that hear it. Until they become the very image of the things that they hear. So also the Pharisees. They preach to their congregation. And they can only make their congregation become what their preacher is. The fruit will tell the tree. When Jesus came, look at what the fruit of the Pharisees said. We have no king but Caesar. Pilate said, but this is your king, the king of the Jews. No, we have no king but Caesar. That was what their teacher taught them. And the Bible says that the high priest moved the people that they may demand for Barabbas and crucify Jesus Christ. You see, the church, the Pharisees, the leaders, the high priests move the congregation to ask for Barabbas, the thief, and reject Jesus Christ. How did he do it? By preaching to them. He poured himself into the people listening to him. And the people went out there and reproduced what their leader is. Oh my God. Those people there, they will be what their preacher is. Every church will be like their preacher. You can't be higher. Why did Jesus say the blind will lead the blind? Because there is no way a blind man can lead a man that can see. He is blind himself. So his followers must be all blind. And who was Christ referring to? The high priest. He was a blind man. He saw God and called him Beelzebub. And his whole congregation called him Beelzebub because they were all blind. Alright. And by the preachings and by the preachings of the congregation or the churches, the churches are formed of either that the fruit shows the tree is good or the fruit shows the tree is bad. Glory be to our God. Alright, turn to the book of Leviticus. Let's take a few scriptures here quickly. Leviticus 17. Leviticus 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord had commanded, saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or that killeth it out of the camp, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He hath shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and burn the fat for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a warring. This shall be a statue forever unto them who are their generation. Can we say Amen. Can we say amen? Now, listen, listen. Before Aaron and his sons became priests, everybody did whatever he wanted. And they sacrificed in the field. This one sacrificed in his farm. The other one sacrificed at the back of his house. They said, God is everywhere. See? 
But God instituted a priesthood, which was one single family, Aaron and his son, not his daughter, not his wife. His wife was not a priest. His daughters were not priests. Can you hear me? All right, the word of God was Aaron and his son. And now, God commands through Moses, tell them to preach to the church that anybody among them that kills a lamb or an ox or whatever animal for a sacrifice must bring it to the door of the tabernacle. People can say, but why? Why, why bring it to the door? Huh? It appears this man wants to eat the meat. That's all right. You can say whatever you like. But that is God's word. And it has a meaning. Because Jesus is the door. Every sacrifice, every offering, every tithe, every prayer, every praise, do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything outside that, you are doing it to devil. Hell Mary full of the Saint Peter pray for us. Saint Michael pray for you. You went to the mountain at the horrid nonsense. Bring it to the door. And Jesus is the door of the sheep pole. Anybody that comes from the window is a thief. That's the door. See? He says that they may no more sacrifice to devils. Is it possible? Can it be possible that a man will think he's worshipping God but is actually offering to devils? Yes, it's possible. Depending on who is his preacher and who is his teacher. If it's a demon possessed preacher, he will teach you to offer to devils. If it's a Holy Ghost possessed man, he will lead you to the door of the tabernacle. Of the sheep. Alright. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to God whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your father feared not, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no revelation. No faith. They have moved me to jealousy. With what? With that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger. With their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy. With those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Can you say amen? Now listen. After God had expressly commanded Moses on how offerings and sacrifices are to be offered to the Almighty God to avoid offering it to devils. Because there are many devils ready to accept your offering. Of course. Satan himself wants to be worshipped. God said, bring this here. If you can bring it to this place, and my servant the priest will play his own part. Then it will be offered to me. But here in Deuteronomy, after the law was given in, in Leviticus, here in Deuteronomy, in fact, the, the God described them as his sons in verse 19. See? Because of the provoking of his sons and daughters, God's own sons, God's own daughters were provoking their father. By what? By disobeying. By not keeping his command. 
just by worshiping devils. The Bible said they began to worship new gods. New gods that were just manufactured. New, new gods. New generation gods. Are his sons and daughters today not provoking him? With fantastic, useless doctrines that are not in the Bible, not in the message. How they worship without sobriety, without reverence, use quotations to fabricate and produce things that the prophet never even thought about. Look at what is producing among the brides. Doctrines that have no basis in the scriptures. Marriage and divorce is confused. Some things of Daniel confused. Uh, the hair of the women confused. Everything is confused. Why? They have turned away. His own sons and daughters provoking him by new doctrines, new teachings that our fathers, the apostles and the prophets never knew nothing about. That's the way it was in the Old Testament. It says your fathers did not fear this type of gods you are worshipping now. You are provoking God by your own inventions, by what you invented. That's what they are doing today. I'm calling for Abraham's message what they invented. Their own inventions. Those who said the Bible seven thunder, there are ten different interpretations of the same thing. How can God be a confusionist? God is not the author of confusion. That man made dogma. Worshipping devils and don't know. His own sons and daughters. Oh brother, don't be one of his sons and daughters that's provoking him. Alright. Let me read uh, uh, something here. Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter eleven. Chronicles after Samuel after Kings, Second Chronicles eleven, chapter eleven and verse fourteen. For the Levites left their suburb and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem, for Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord, and he ordained him priests of the high places, and for the devils, and for the cows which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they threatened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong. Three years, for three years, they walked in the way of David and Solomon. Amen. Now we see that way down after Moses had gone and all the prophets have gone, Joshua had gone. Now David is gone. Solomon is gone. Way down, people are still ordaining preachers who lead the congregation to worship devils. Can you imagine that? Jeroboam ordained some people and called them priests. But they were priests of devils. Am I correct? Did you see that? The congregation can only be what their preacher is. Oh, I'm a Roman Catholic. You can only be what your reverend father is. Oh, I'm a Baptist. Watch who your preacher is. Oh, I'm an Anglican. Is your priest a nobody member? Oh, I'm a Celestial Church. Watch whether he watches Manu water. Whatever your preacher is, that is what the congregation will be. Because he pours himself into you. First Corinthians 10. Let's see what can happen today. We have seen it in the Old Testament. Is it possible today? First Corinthians 10. And verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devil and not to God. And I will not that ye should have 
fellowship with how many? Plus S at the end. Is that correct? When he talked about God, there was no S. But when he says devil, there's always an because there are so many of them. Devils. Now, what do the Gentiles offer? What? I want somebody to tell me. Give me an idea. What do you think the Gentiles offer? What? What was Paul having in mind? What? Don't be afraid. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. The devil. Yes, my lord. What do they offer in sacrifice? Yes. They are children. That's one. Yeah? Uh huh. Paul, goat, dog. Yeah? Huh? Your heart? Alright. What about singing and dancing? Huh. If you ever hear Sele play guitar and sing, you get converted. I'm telling you, go and throw white cloth one time. Because they know. Oh, Satan, he was the chief choir master. He loves music. And he can inspire them. He can anoint them. Look at the worldly musician. Look at the worldly musician. They sing until they are here. They can't compete again. They say, Rasta Farah. What do you think that is? Devil! Nothing more than devil. If you see where they worship idols in their temple, how they dance, it's not the Tinyanga we are making here. They dance with dedication, concentration, until they are inspired. They walk through fire and it won't burn them. They dance on top of broken bottles, it won't burn them. They are trying to demonstrate that God is powerful. You haven't seen that? I have seen it. You see them dance, 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 dance with their knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, woo, woo, woo. Haven't you seen my He's demonstrating his God. But Paul said it is all unto devil. Different, 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 different devil. But let me tell you, we are not reading a dictionary. This is the Holy Bible. The apostle says that there are Gentile people who go to church. Not only those magicians we're talking about, in churches. And the priest is a devil himself. And the worshippers, devils themselves. And they're singing, and they're offering, and they're God, and they're everything is all unto devil. And they don't know. Didn't Revelation say they are blind and they are naked and they, are, they think they are rich, increasing good and don't know it? Devil. Oh my God. Jesus said to the apostles, wait in Jerusalem. He knew what he was talking about. Don't preach for me, don't baptize anybody. The kingdom of God is coming, yes, but wait. I am to decide when it comes. You went to Jerusalem until you receive power. Yeah. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Because Jesus knows. As he himself poured himself on the apostles. So the apostles will pour themselves on those that hear them. He said, you wait until you get the right skill. Oh, help us, Lord. Is this possible today? That people can go to church and worship devil. Carve one Joseph and put here. Carve Joseph. Carve uh, St. Mary and put here. Carve St. Somebody. Put the other side. And then bow down before idols made by men. Things that our fathers knew nothing about. They do today. Their own inventions. The Bible calls it their own invention. I think there's one scripture. Let me see if I'm correct. The book of Psalms. 
the book of Psalm, please. 106, I think. That's the way David said it there. Let me see if I'm correct. 106. And uh, I believe it's 34 or so. 106 verse 34. I'm correct. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their work, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Those were they defiled with their own work, and went a warring, yeah, with their what? What they invented. Think about it. What a man invented. Paul had to suffer in the hands of one Alexander the Capatist because he used to invent God. The Capatist. He used to invent God. Huh? Then Paul said, These things are not God. Throw them away and worship the Almighty God. And the man cluttered the whole village and said, This is our business. This our craft is going to collapse because that Paul, he said there are no gods made with hands. He said, this man, if we allow him, hunger is going to kill us. So what are we going to do? See, their own inventions. People go to Alexander the Coppersmith and buy gold. See, and put in the house and then worship it. See. One of my uncles invited me one time to his house and he had something wonderful to show to me. And I, I followed him. He said, listen, my son, you are a very religious man. And that's why we all know you are different. But let me tell you, I am very religious too. I am not very religious. I said, I'm happy to hear that, sir. He said, come, come and see. I followed him. He took me to his house. One corner, one window, there's one small table. On the table is one carved maid, looking so miserable, you know, like, like that. And then there's two candles beside the maid. And then there's a chaplet hanging in one corner, and a white cloth on the table. He said, a father came and consecrated my, my altar. He said, father came last Friday to consecrate my altar. I now have altar in my house. I said, oh, how cool, that's wonderful. I said, look at your altar. The man is there looks miserable. You are just going to be like this thing you are worshipping. I said, see how she is? That's how you will be. See? <laughs> she looked at me. She looked at that thing. He has never seen it like that before. He saw it as a holy something. Huh. So then he looked at me. He looked at that thing. He looked at me again. <laughs> I know something was going on in his mind. I said, somebody made that thing. I said, I have one Pope in my house. It's a, a bottle of whiskey. One of my brothers, Albert, my brother, I don't know where he got it from. It's a Pope. The head is the cover of the bottle. It's a, a whiskey bottle. But it is molded like a Pope. The head is the cover of the bottle. So if you cock it and stand it, it's exactly like a Pope. Huh. I said, I have one in my house. I said, I think you see it. He said, yes. I said, somebody made that for whiskey. They pour whiskey inside it. I said, this is your own. Somebody made it to make money. And because you are not wise, they sold it to you. The man who makes this thing, he doesn't worship it. And here you are. Put one miserable thing in your house. And you are very happy to call me to come and see. I said, the God who made you, made you in his image. You are the image of your maker. Now, this thing you are, going, you are worshiping, the Bible says all the people that worship idol in Isaiah, it says all of them shall be like that idol. I say one day you are going to be like this. You say, what am I to do now? <laughs> he said, well, I put it here so that I can be praying every time. I said, you don't need the one miserable Mary. 
huh? made with a bone. This is bone. It's melted bone, either bone of cow or bone of something. It's bone. This is not real true Mary. See? If you want to pray to God, you don't need all this. The temple is in your heart. The altar of God is in your heart. Not, not this small table here. What do you use this table for before? One old cranky table that they used to eat and everything. I said, now if you want to eat, what are you going to do? You put the food on the ground and li- li- put this one that cannot eat on the table. I said, Uncle, I'm sorry. You. I thought you were a wise man. That's why you called me. I said, I'll be happy to throw the whole thing out of the window. He said, but he thought uh, the father blessed him. I said, the father himself is like this thing. <laughs> the same thing. I said, how much did he pay him? He told me how much he paid. He paid for that. For the father to come and bless him. He paid for that. I said, how much did Jesus charge for those that he healed from sickness and all that? See how you are blind? You will be like your preacher, that's all. Jesus said, uh, the Bible says, when he comes, we shall be not like an angel. No, no, no. Not like anybody else. We will be like him. Because it is his word we are feeding on. Like him. Glory be to him. Before we go on, let's just sing one song of faith. Chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 16. Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Amen. Please pay attention. Now, notice that whatever a preacher is, that is what the church will be. Now, the prophet said you can never be higher than your pastor. Never. There's no way you can. There are those that think they can. But they're only being double blind. You can't be. All right. Notice here he says to Peter, Paul was saying, You know these doctrines. Continue in them. Those who have deviated, leave them alone. There are some people that just can't get established. They just can't get grounded. They just can't get uh, mature. They want to know what is happening here. They want to know what is happening there. It's always so. Natural things teach spiritual things. There are people who are never contented with what they have. And yet the Bible says godliness with contentment is a great gain. Great gain. Not just gain, but great. Godliness. Add it to what you have. It brings satisfaction. There are people that will never be contented. They want to try that. They want to try the other one. Find faults here and there. Just roaming about. Those people have nothing in their soul. Just empty barrels rolling around. In the days of Paul, there were people who started with Paul. Their might have forsaken me. See? Uh, higher news are trying to say they are teaching things that nobody t- told them to teach. They invented those ones. Resurrection was over. Huh? Even till now, resurrection has not come. And they were teaching it was over in the days of Paul. They invented that one. And Paul was the first church age messenger. If there were such people then, surely there would be such people now. And the Bible says, ignore such people. Leave them alone. Stay with the truth. The holy word of God. It says, you stay with the doctrine. Take heed unto thyself. Paul telling Timothy. And unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Even if everybody else leave it. You just stay steady. Because you will finally save yourself. 
and save the whole church that listen to you. That's what I intend to do. I don't care about what anybody has discovered. It doesn't mean nothing to me. The Bible has warned me to stay steady on the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God hides himself in simplicity and reveals himself in simplicity. And in doing this, I will save myself and everyone that hear me. Glory be to God. What the preacher is, that's what the church will be. If he's a prayerful man, the church will be prayerful. If he's loving, the church will be filled with love. If he's uh, kind, the church will be filled with kindness. If he's humble, you will see humility. If he's godly, you will see godliness. If the man is an Obony member, there will be Obony members. And when Obony members come, they will be very comfortable. See? If the man worships devils, oh, there will be many devil worshippers. But if he's not an Obony member, no Obony member will be comfortable. None. If he's not worshipping devils, no place for the, for the devil to hide. There will be no place. That's the truth. If the preacher is a smoker, well, everybody can go and smoke. See? Give him a packet first. Whatever the preacher is, that's what the church will be. Whatever Jesus was, that's what the apostles became. Jesus was not different, the apostles different. No! He raised the dead, they raised the dead. He forgave sins, they forgave sins. He cast out devils, they cast out devils. Hallelujah! Anything Jesus was, the apostles were the same thing. Why? He was the tree. And they were the fruit of the tree. Come to Jesus. Grandmother. Whatever the head of that grandmother is, that's what the rest of them will be. There's no two ways about it. See? If today the Pope gets married, let me tell you all the bishops will marry. And all the reverend fathers were married. And if the Holy Ghost comes down today in Rome, like he did in Jerusalem, and he preached St. Peter's Basilica, huh? and people spoke with tongues, and signs and wonders and miracles take place, it will sweep through the whole Roman Catholic Church. But the Holy Ghost won't come with people who greeting Mary, wife of Joseph, Hail Mary, full of grace. He doesn't bring the Holy Ghost. No, you don't hear such things yet. Whatever the preacher is, think of any denomination you know, any of them. Whatever their preacher is, that's what the church is. Wherever that man is going, that's where they all go with him. The blind, leave the blind. One will not go free, and the other one falls into the deep. They will all go where? In the ditch. Every one of them. That's the truth. Manifestation. The congregation will manifest their preacher. Just like the, the apostles manifested Christ. When Peter came to the gate of the, of the uh, beautiful gate, he says, uh, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have, what is inside me, I'll point to you now. Course. Did he do it? No. That's what Jesus was. And when that man jumped off, people were looking at Peter as if he was a wonderful man. Peter said, One minute, brother. I, I am just a fisherman. This thing you see now is to show to you that Jesus Christ, the one you crucified, he is not dead. He is alive again. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, faith, faith in his name has made this man whole. He wasn't quoting Moses. So Moses said, or uh, Isaiah said, or uh, Jeremiah said, he showed them Christ alive. My daughter brought my little baby yesterday 
uh, I think it was Kazata's baby. And uh, the little baby said he was so sick of maybe five days or six days, uh, they couldn't sleep feverish and all that, wouldn't eat nothing. And brought the baby, I said, well, this baby, there's nothing wrong with the baby. Ah, that the baby is very sick, very feverish, this and that, you know. I took the baby, prayed for the baby, and after, just after praying, the baby was playing right away. See? And the, mo- the mother said, <laughs> Amen. 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 And the mother said, Could it be he was pretending? I said, For seven days. See? I took the baby to go and catch the fish in my aquarium. And the baby was trying to catch the fish. And turned to the mother and said, <laughs> I said, You see, he was telling you not to report him. And the baby was happy and playing and all day. That's it. And my dear brother here, I was just asking this morning of the baby, brother Fang, a few days ago, my daughter brought a little child. Can't eat for a few days now. What's the matter? Oh, feverish. Can't eat this and that. I took the little one. Just ask the Lord, please. This, our happiness is tied to this little thing. Just release this child. Let's be happy again. I said, take the child home. It's all right. And they went home. And the next day, my brother was telling me from then. The Bible said that man asked his servant, what hour did this child begin to amend? He said, about so and so time. He said, that's the time that the master spoke. See? That's the time. So is fine. And my brother was telling me from then that the baby slept all night. Everything was just fine. And the baby ate for the first time. And so on and so forth. Listen, George, that is Christ alive. That is not what Abraham said. That was Jesus Christ alive. Like what happened at the beautiful day. Christ alive manifesting himself to those that love him. He says, I will come and I will abide. I will live in them and continue my work. Christ alive. The message of the hour is not theology. It's not who knows quotation more. It's who has Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Worship God with joy. Worship God with happiness. If not, Satan will take over. Take you over as fast as he can. Worship God with happiness. Be satisfied. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. All right. The church can only be what the preacher is. You notice that Paul, the people that Paul preached to, Paul called them an epistle. Second, Second Corinthians. If you want to mark that down, Second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians three, the first three verses. And I, brethren, could not speak. No, Second Corinthians. I was reading first. Okay, Second Corinthians three. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others? Episodes of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men for as much as ye are manifestly declared us to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God not in tables of stone but in the fleshly troubles of the heart. Can we say amen? amen? The people that Paul preached to, Paul called them epistles that he ministered to. Epistles of Christ ministered by him. The people I preached to are my own epistles. You are the emphasis of Christ. Ministered by me. People read me when they read you. When you go out there and act like you have never read the Bible before, they say, oh, is that what that man is teaching them? 
surely there must be some Judas's. I know that. And when you go out there and act like you are a child of God, they say, oh, that whoever is this man's pastor is doing a good job. See? Somebody read Peter and his family. And we know the testimony. He's an epistle. The same message he had is what the rest of you had. See? I think by now there should be many others who will read you like somebody read Peter and his family and said, take me to your church. I want to worship that God you worship. Because you can only be